recently I've been speaking on the idea of uh, scaling back kind of your top end and pro and progressing in a way that's maybe a little bit less obvious, but that's still progress. Your progress can't always be linear. You can't always just put weight on the bar every single week and do more of everything. You have to kind of wave uh, your focus, especially when you get more advanced into your adaptation where it takes you a little bit longer to show that progression. And I've been very fortunate that my uh, I, I scaled some things back in my last training block and was able to progress as a result of all that base building. So now I'm back to building some more base potential protocols and uh, a lot of volume. And one of the, I, I, I don't want to say downsides, but one of the uh, things that happen when you increase your overall volume is you tend to be existing in a little bit more of a fatigue deficit, which means that your body gets tired from one worker to the other, or you're going into the next workout without being fully recovered. That's your fatigue debt, and it keeps you from uh, being able to really express your absolute strength every single time. Uh, if you could just go in and hit a PR every single time and you're in the gym, that means that you have gotten better from the last time that you've done it. That means that you're at least recovered enough to show an improvement on what assumedly was your best performance leading to that point. And right now, that's just not going to be the case for a little while. That's what happens when I go into a volume block, and uh, I would definitely on this day was still feeling some of the fatigue from Tuesday's squat workout, which wasn't a crazy amount of volume uh, considering what I've done in the past, but it was more than I have been doing recently. And so you kind of have to build up that volume tolerance, and that's part of the grind. So on this day, I was working up with my deadlifts. I was planning on doing some triples. Uh, gave myself a percent cap again at around 85%. I said, okay, I'll do a, I'll do a, a triple at 80%, and then I will um, kind of see where I'm going from there. Go up to 85, and then I will use that attempt, I guess, that set as a gauge uh, or as an initial set. I'll give it an RPE rating. And then I will adjust my um, estimated max for the day and then work off of that estimated max to kind of determine uh, what I can handle on this day. And it's not normally something I would do for all of my training, but when, it, when, I'm in an, an, uh, wait, when I am in a volume block like this, I uh, am less certain that my max is is accurate to the day and that's kind of what the idea of auto regulation is you can't always come in and hit the most weight that you ever have on a single especially if you're um, getting some of that fatigue built up and you're in a bit of a deficit in those terms and so uh, that's the point of auto regulation and RPE and using it so that you can um, scale the work so that you're getting as much out of it on the day that you can without uh, without sticking to so strict of a plan that it doesn't allow you, you know, that you could potentially be missing work that you should have done or um, keep you just giving your best effort on the day and and working within the confines of your ability for that given day. So this was my 85% attempt. This is 655, and uh, it didn't feel great, <laughs> which, you know, the for, I did something weird on that last one where I breathed awkwardly at the top and kind of did a weird touch and go thing and said all right well that maybe isn't as good as it should have felt uh i rated it an 8.5 which means i felt really confident that i could have gotten another rep and a half um and so i uh, did a little bit of adjusting on my assume max for the day brought it down and then dropped down to 85 percent of that new assume max and you're going to see uh, these reps were a little bit more along the parameters of what I'm trying to work with in this block. I don't need a whole lot of super grindy tough things. I don't want to be working at a, you know, a 9 or a 10 RPE for most of this because it's a lot of repeated sets and I'm trying to get my overall volume up more than I am my uh, absolute intensity for any one set. This isn't a block where I'm going to be aiming for a lot of PRs. This is a block where I'm trying to get as much work in as I can. And uh, misgrooved that first rep a little bit definitely felt better on the second and third. But that was the uh, deadlifting that I had. And then I'm going to move from my sumo pulls into kind of a weakness addressing thing. This is my stiff leg 
uh, conventional stance pulls, I did uh, an eight minute AMSAP, which is many sets as possible in eight minutes, and said, okay, I got 405, I'm going to do sets of eight. And I have, uh, this is a good and appropriate opportunity, I feel, to address some of the questions I got in my last video or some comments that people had. Um, I just want to make it clear when I was talking about using lower reps for your competition movements, I was not bastardizing or or demonizing the idea of doing high rep work for for things. I, I, I wasn't saying that you should never ever do high reps. I definitely thought I put a lot of disclaimers in that video to make sure that people were aware that I wasn't trying to say that. Uh, but some other people maybe weren't getting exactly where I was coming from. When I was talking about keeping your competition lift rep schemes with uh, from getting too crazy high rep, you know, I used five reps as an arbitrary number. Your rep abilities and your rep ideals are different depending on the person. But I would say in general, I would rather see someone who is training specifically for powerlifting who doesn't have the goal of general strength gain or general muscular uh, improvement and hypertrophy. If you're not trying to be a bodybuilder or a power builder, I'm not talking about people who are like, I want to be the best of both worlds. I'm talking about someone who is specifically trying to get the best total they can. You have to practice the skill of the power lifts in the context of using the, uh, using those movements and rep ranges in a heavy enough range that you're practicing that skill because there is not as much of a carryover from doing those competition lifts for a higher amount of reps where you are going to increase your potential for uh, technical breakdown due to something other than pushing the heavy weight and not having enough strength and being able to keep your technique solid for a small amount of reps with a heavy weight. I'm totally for the idea of using rep work in a supplemental exercise or an accessory movement or even a variation of the movement to get more uh, muscle activation, hypertrophy, general strength gain, weakness, uh, improvement. I'm all for all those ideas, but if you're going to be doing your competition lift, I think you should try to keep it more specific and fill in the rest of your volume and other things with an environment or in a context where it's not going to negatively build less than ideal motor patterns because you have the fatigue from the set breaking you down. I had some people say, well, what if you're, um, what if you can keep your uh, technique solid even in high rep sets? And while that is something that's, you know, people can say that, yes, I do that, it's different. Your technique is different on a max double, single, triple, four, or set of five than it would be on a set of 10, 12, 15, 20. It's just that you approach the lift differently, you have to brace differently, you can't treat every lift like it's a single and it becomes more of a conditioning cardio type movement than it does prepping for one to two reps of a whole, you know, where you're testing yourself with a heavy weight and a maximal load. And they say, well, if I keep it at an eight RPE, if you do 12 reps at an eight RPE, uh, that weight wasn't really heavy enough to warrant fitting into a powerlifting scheme in, in my understanding, in my opinion, I think people can make that argument in the opposite, maybe an off-season or something where you're building conditioning, you're building your work capacity, and you're short on time, so you can't do, you know, eight sets of three. You'd rather do three sets of eight with a lighter weight and get out of the gym faster. But I wasn't talking about what is a little bit more practical for someone who has time constraints. I'm talking about someone who is idealistically pursuing powerlifting. And it's an argument that exists just kind of because I have time to talk about it and you guys have time to talk about it. I'm not saying it's what everyone should do or, or that it hurts my feelings if someone disagrees or has a different view on uh, how ideally to train. I don't think that there's any one way to do it, but I think it's important to at least have discussions to build your own understanding of a situation and not just rely on the constant cop-out of, well, it works for me. It's You have to challenge your ideas and challenge your thoughts and challenge the way that you look at the work you're doing or else you resign yourself to never getting better at it. So I hope that clears up some of the things that were confusing with people or uh, potentially frustrating. I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings or upset anyone. I was just trying to um, give away 
uh, to think about some stuff. So anyway, after my eight minutes of stiff leg deadlifts, I did my close grip bench pressing. I kept those, uh, my five heavier sets of two, and then I did some ultra wide grip. So my finger, my hands were outside the rings and was doing sets of eight, another eight minute AMSAP. I ended up getting four sets there. Um, and they felt pretty good. I was uh, trying to address some of those weaknesses again in my uh, my pec and shoulder area. Um, just keeping them really controlled with a light enough weight that I could get some muscle activation and some hypertrophy. And again, focus on those weaknesses without throwing off my motor pattern from my normal bench press. After those were finished, I moved on to uh, my supersets for, again, more weakness assessment and weakness... Uh, I guess, improvements, and had my pushdowns with my rope curls. I ended up getting one, another set um, over what I got last week with the same loading, and uh, so instead of the eight sets of 10 I got last week, I got nine sets of 10, and I did it about seven minutes faster, which was good. That shows that the work capacity is improving, as well as my in my in session conditioning. After that, I did my last superset of uh, dips and those supinated grip penlay rows with some increased weight, and those are going well too. So overall, things are starting to move up, and it's kind of grindy to kind of push that envelope and, and focus on improvement in a different way than just uh, constantly trying to set PRs. But this is how you build the base, at least in my experience, and what has what has worked uh, in the past and what I've seen work for many other people. And also, big announcement, I do have a nutrition coach now. It is a, it's a big deal to me, and I am happy and proud to announce that I am working with uh, the very smart and nutritionally wise Lane Norton. Um, you guys may have heard of him. If you're on this channel and heard of me, you've probably heard of Lane, USAPL lifter, very strong guy, very smart, and uh, I, it is no secret to me, and I don't try to uh, hide it from anybody that my nutritional... Um, background is not nearly as uh, as well established as my as my training background, my programming background. So I am very excited to learn from this experience, and I'm taking this prep very seriously, trying to get ready for USPA nationals. And I think that getting everything in line and having a coach is a very good way to uh, keep myself, you know, in line and to bring the best the best preparedness that I am capable of bringing on that day. So thank you all for watching. I apologize for the incredibly long video, but I had a lot to say and a lot to share. Uh, so thanks if you've stuck around this long. I appreciate it very much, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.